Hey everyone, this is Nellie May with Swift Creek Customs and today I wanted to talk about and demonstrate the positioning options when you go to send your design in Leonardo Design Studio and how that affects where it cuts. So I'm simply going to draw out a square and scale that to three inches by three inches and then I'm going to place that at the two inch mark on my cutting mat, two inch over and two inches up and that's where I'm going to start. So the first one I'm going to select and demonstrate is the move each color layer to origin. When I do that, it is going to place that square in the bottom left corner, but there is a margin of error that is built into the software. I'm using the cutter settings and I'm going to set this up. So I've already done my test cuts. I'm going to set it up in the bottom left corner I am using the camera, which I will post a link in the description below to a video on how to do that, to set the point of origin for my blade. So it's starting in the bottom left corner. I'm going to choose send, and this is the new send screen in version 1.1.20 or higher. Now I did cut in the bottom left corner there, and you can see that little margin of error that is in, built in. Here's a still shot of that. And then going back into the software, it is at the two inch by two inch mark. If I choose keep relative positions of each layer, it's going to still place that original shape in the bottom left hand corner. I'm going to add a shape in here so that we can get an idea of what happens when there's more than one shape on the cutting mat. Now the first thing I want to show when I click send design is I chose move each color to layer to origin. Then I realized I hadn't changed the color, so I went back to the design screen, changed the color so that these two shapes would show up on two different design mats. So I can show you two things here. With move each color to origin selected, it moves the rectangle to the bottom left hand corner. And then if I select the circle or oval, it moves it to the bottom left hand corner. And you can see on the design screen where those are positioned. If I select keep relative positions of each layer, when I click send, it's going to place that square in the bottom left hand corner. And then the oval is in relation to where that square is. So it doesn't move it to the point of origin, but it moves it to the relationship where it is compared or placed on that square. So next I'm going to click on send again and keep relative positions and I'm going to demonstrate that. First thing I need to do is set up my mat and my camera is a little bit out of focus here just from the movement. I used the camera once again to make sure it was in this exact same point of origin that I had before. Then I'm going to choose send that oval to be cut. And here is where it cut in relation to that square. Now I'm going to set it up without even unloading the mat, setting the camera on the machine again to the point of origin so I can demonstrate what the next option is. So I'm leaving those in the exact same position and I'm choosing use current mat and page location. Click on send and I'm going to send the square to cut on the machine. Choose send to cutter and it is now going to cut in the two inch by two inch area. And then I'm going to send the oval and it's going to cut the oval in relation to the square from the square's point of origin of two inches by two inches. So let's get this in the light here. So I've already removed the first square, which was the number one option. You want to keep in mind that it has this margin of error or margin before it starts, even though I set the cut point of origin every single time to the exact location, it has this margin of error here for your cut location. Then the second time I sent the circle that I added in there so you could see where it was going to cut in relation. So the second option on the send tab, it also moves everything to point of origin, but it moves it in relation to the two objects on your screen or more objects. So I had a square and then my circle. Move the square to the point of origin and then it did the circle. 
The third option we can see here, same shapes. It did this in the relative position of the cutting mat. So wherever it's placed on your virtual design screen, in this case, it was at the two inch by two inch mark on the cutting mat. It did the square and then the circle in relation. So all of these options are going to determine where it cuts, etches, or creases on your project. So it is very good to practice with this and to test with it so you understand exactly where it is going to work and how it's going to function. And one other thing to mention is that all of everything we've discussed is in relation to where you are telling the machine is the starting point or origin, point of origin. So if you move, let me just load the mat here. If you move the housing and you start the point of origin in the middle of your mat, and you were to tell it that it had it was to cut a 12 inch design it's going to come over here and it's going to start beeping at you so you are in charge of wherever that point of origin so wherever you leave the tip of the blade is where the machine is going to think is the bottom left corner of the design and then depending on what you tell it on the send tab which option you select that is going to be in relation to this as the zero zero starting point so even if you have this here on your three inch by two inch mark, the machine still thinks this is 0, 0.0 and that's where it's going to start from. So here's another look at the use cutting current mat and page location. I set this up in the corner that had not been cut yet on my cardstock. I'm using the camera to set the point of origin. This just gives me a little bit more accuracy um, either way, eyeballing it or the um, camera works. And then I'm going to send, I had to choose my cardstock, and then I'm going to send this with the square and it's using current location. So I sent the square and the oval. Then I'm going to send this and I moved the design to the six inch mark. Okay, so here's another example. I just wanted to give a clearer picture of the use current map position. So the first one that I sent is down here and it was placed in the bottom left corner. I can go ahead and let's remove this piece. It does not have that as much of a margin as before, but the software won't let you set it at a zero, zero point. It thinks it's off the mat. So there is just a tiny bit of uh, cut here where it moves the housing in. You can work with that and fiddle with it a little bit more. The next one, I set it at six inches. So we'll move this mat out here. So it was six inches and use current map position and you can see that it did it at the six inch mark exactly that little tiny let's see if we can get in here about the same sliver on this as here which could be two factors it could be the software with a little tiny tiny margin or it could be because of my mat and where I placed my point of origin uh, or the cardstock on the mat. So those are just a couple things to keep in mind, um, a little extra demo there. Hopefully those tips have helped. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. This may be one of those videos that you want to bookmark and watch a couple of times. It is going to take practice and you will make mistakes, but I hope that it helps you in your journey with the Caesar Juliet or Romeo machine. Thanks for joining me and have a great day.